Hey there, Michelle. How's it going today? Hey, Lindsay. Good, good. How are you? I'm feeling great. Do you have a question to start off the show today? I do. Do you ever forget something and get frustrated because it's something you should remember? Oh, for sure. It happens. It happens. The older I get, the more it happens. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Does that happen to you? Of course. Just just the other day, I couldn't remember something and I was sitting on the couch like, oh. ah, I can't, I can't get it. But um, it, it does get frustrating. So we are going to talk about that today because we have a question from a listener about really useful expression for when this happens, when we have those moments where it's not just not quite coming to the brain. <laughs> it, it happens to all of us. This is a human. This is These are the topics that I love to explore with our audience, our listeners, because this is a very human thing. Things go blank, right? So can I go ahead and read the question from our listeners? Please. Yes. Okay. Here we go. So this is from Velcon Belmont. And they said, sometimes people ask you a question you don't expect and you don't know how to answer it. Is I drew a blank expression an expression i can use in this case and what about to throw someone a curveball thank you girls oh lovely question i love it yes very good very specific so yeah to draw a blank mm -hmm. um before we get into it we want to redirect you if you would like to listen we have an awesome episode on the business english podcast is can you say good when you agree in english yeah, go over and check out that episode, guys. Can you say good when you agree in English? That was Business English 202. If you are not following the Business English yes. podcast, you should be, right? We publish three days a week over there. So go open up your search bar, find Business English and hit follow. All right, All right. Michelle, let's get right into it. Okay, so Lindsay, what does it mean to draw a blank? All right. So it basically means that something can't be remembered. All of a sudden it's gone. Poof. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just escaped from your brain. You can't, you're trying to get it back. Um, I, yeah. Lindsay, what do you think it's frequently used for? What are some things that I think people frequently might forget? For sure. Names. Oh my gosh, yeah. it happens all of the time. You knew the name yeah. and all of a sudden you forgot it. Dates, it can happen or other random pieces of information, maybe names of restaurants, things like that. Ah, mm. yes, right. Yeah, it's usually it's usually the name of something. That's what, mm -hmm. that's what I think. But of course it could be anything. Um, but we often hear it said like this, I'm drawing a blank. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, mm -hmm. I think it's usually said in the moment. Right. So that's why sure. we would have the ING. I, I yes, so you might be telling a story about it and you could say, oh, I drew a blank. Um, but I, I feel like this is a frequent way that it's used in the moment. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. What do you think? I agree. I agree with you, Michelle. It's much more of an in the moment expression. You know, on this show, we show you expressions that can be used to recount things that happened before. Yeah. But this isn't really one of them. Don't you agree? This is an yeah. in the moment phrase when you just can't get it. You can't pull it up uh, out of your brain. Yes. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let's do some examples. I'm meeting with her Sunday at what's that restaurant's name? I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> All right, perfect. That's one. Write these down, guys. Go ahead and write them down. Here's the next. I'm drawing a blank. What's your son's name again? Mm -hmm. Okay. That happens to me a lot. I feel Does it? that I say this uh, uh, kind of frequently because I meet a lot of moms, a lot of kids, and I'll forget. And I think it just is normal. Everybody forgets. Everybody, I think, realizes that you meet someone the first time, especially when your kids are around and yeah. you say the name, but you're probably going to have to ask again. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I'm so bad at paying it. For some reason, my mind stops listening sometimes when I ask for the name. I don't know I why know. that happens, but it happens and it's such a bad habit. Um, and then I'll have to ask inevitably a second time, right? Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> I have to drop that yeah. habit. Uh, I think we've actually done yeah. an episode about oh, that before. So I, I'm have. Not, not sure the number, but yeah, exactly. It's It, it happens. That's okay. Yeah. So Lindsay, you had a question? What about at work? Can we use this at work? What do you think? We talk a lot about how when you're at work, we can be formal, informal, and semi-formal. We, above all, we want to be a human being, right? Yeah, right. Um, I think that you can use this at work. I think if you use it all the mm -hmm. time, people might 
start to wonder if everything's okay or if you're not on top of things. <laughs> I think using right. it about something benign, like a restaurant's name is fine. But if you are coming about policies or certain ways things are done, right. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank all the time. Mm, not people, good. Might, not, not, not good. Something. Or they might think you yeah. don't have the resources or know where to find that information. Right. But generally, if you're talking about things outside of work, that's a better way to use I'm drawing a blank. And often we have these conversations in the break room or over a business lunch. Totally legitimate. Right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, Michelle. So what about our listener also asked, right? our listener Velcon yeah. also asked about throwing a curveball. Right. So I just want... <laughs> I just want to touch on this a little bit. So I, I I was thinking about it and it does kind of relate because if you throw someone a curveball, you ask them something or do something that surprises them, mm -hmm. which can cause them to draw a blank. So, mm. right. So they're, they are connected. Um, and I think that that's good that the listener asked about both of these because I'm just looking over the question again. It says, sometimes people ask you a question you don't expect and you don't sure. know how to answer it. So in my opinion, if somebody throws you a curveball, you are it, you have the potential to draw a blank. It, it yeah, connects I, in that way. I completely agree with you, Michelle. They they play together. I'm I'm yeah. drawing a blank. You, you threw me a curveball here. I'm drawing a blank. Give me a second to come up with the answer. Right? Totally exactly. common phrase. It makes total sense. Yes. Right. And this is something I was thinking about on our episode. Sometimes we ask each other questions on the show. Sure. Maybe we're asking for a story. So it, it's not only necessarily names of something, but I'm thinking of what we talk about on the show if we say, oh, um, oh, do you have any experience with that or a conversation <laughs> question? And then sometimes we'll say, ah, I'm drawing a blank. I can't think of it in the moment. Right. And it's even worse when you know that there is something, but you can't, for some reason, come up with it in that moment spontaneously. Would you say that you're good thinking off the top of your head, Michelle? Uh, just kidding. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> okay, got it. That was a joke. Um, am I good thinking off the top of my head? I think so. I used to do yeah. improv. Um, did you? As, yeah, did you do that so in New York? In New York? I did. I wow. did. When I first moved to New York, um, I was a part of an improv meetup. And uh -huh. I got to meet a lot of really neat people. And it was fun. So I, I like improv. I, I do like... I, I think you and I have to be good at thinking off the top of our heads. Otherwise, yeah. we couldn't do the show. I agree. <laughs> and I imagine probably when you did improv, there were certain techniques that you learned. I wonder if those would be useful. Hmm, maybe we should do an episode in the future mm, improv on episode. techniques that you learned in improv for our listeners to get better at speaking spontaneously. Actually, that, that would be that fun. Yeah, yeah, I have to go back. See, right now, if you were going to ask me about some activities, you I would, would say, them. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing because a blank. It's been a while. <laughs> I'd have to kind of do some Googling, remember what I used to right. do. I can remember some activities, some um, sure. exercises. So, but that would, that would definitely be fun. But guys, we can do an, another episode about throwing yeah. a curveball more specifically and For sure. improv. <laughs> I mean, that's also, t that ties into baseball too, right? Throwing a curveball, it's where baseball comes into English. So guys, yeah. hit follow, look for that episode coming up another time. Good stuff. Are there other things we could say if we don't want to always say I'm drawing a blank, if it happens to us a lot? What else could Definitely. we say, Michelle? Definitely. So one thing is just, this is very direct, basic. I mm -hmm. can't think of it right now. And that's, it's, that's yeah. used. Oh, I can't think of it right now. Oh, right. Sometimes that's what comes out of our mouth. And it's very, very clear. This is very descriptive, right? I can't think of it right now. Or it's on the tip of my tongue. I like this one. It's kind of Me an too. idiom, but I use it a lot. I think we use this a ton in English. Definitely. It's on the tip of my tongue. It just, it, it, it gives an image. <laughs> yeah. Or, or it's right on the tip of my tongue. It's right, right. on the tip of right my tongue. Right on the tip of my tongue. Guys, that's ah. a good opportunity for pronunciation. I also would say if you're not listening to IELTS Energy and you're taking the IELTS exam, this would be a really interesting thing to put into your speaking test. Mm, if yeah. you can't quite, you, you'd actually score pronunciation points if you used the opportunity to really enunciate and vocabulary points. So go over and listen to our IELTS Energy podcast if you're not listening to that. But that's a winner for the IELTS exam. Love that. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea, Lindsay. So mm. before we get into a role play, we are going to give you some Spotify key poll results. Guys, we are mm. having so much fun doing these key polls. 
polls on Spotify. If oh, yeah. you listen on Spotify, you are able to answer polls for yes. the episodes. And we also do one episode in general where we then announce the results. So we want to hear what you have to say, and we will share the results with you. So today is a results day. All right. And in this key poll, we asked our listeners, are you tech savvy? This was from episode 2139. Take a stab at these English phrases. We wanted to know, are you tech savvy? Yes or no? What was the result, Michelle? What did we learn about our audience? Well, we learned that it's almost half and half. Okay. Um, so yes, tech savvy listeners, 46% of you said you were tech savvy and 54% mm -hmm. said no. So Almost equal, not quite. More, more of you, not so much. <laughs> well, it's a hard question to answer because it's all relative. Like the other day, right. I we hired a contractor to work on my dad's house, and it turned out in that scenario, I was tech savvy because I was the only one that knew how to do a three way call. <laughs> oh, and so I had to get both of them, my dad and our contractor, onto that three way call, right? Yeah. Um, but then in another scenario, when That's it comes funny. to developing an app, I'm not tech savvy at all. So it's kind of a relative concept, tech that's, savvy. That's that's very funny. It's true. Yeah. In certain situations, you are. I'm probably the same way. It depends who yeah. you're with. <laughs> it really does. And sometimes it can be really fun. So yeah, that's good to know. We're about half and half leaning slightly in the direction of no, but I think we're all going to have to up our game when it comes to technology as AI starts to enter our world. Right, Michelle? That's Don't you think? Right. That's yeah. at least, yes, that's the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, for now though, let's just do a role play because we love these role plays here. What's going on? What's happening? Okay. Here we are friends at lunch. All or right. going to lunch. Yeah. Love that scenario. Love it. All right. <laughs> All right. So where should we go? Um, that place on third. There's a place on third? Yeah. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, the one that has the blue roof? Yes. Oh, what is it called? Mm, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it right now. Oh, Priscilla's. Yes, that's the one. Michelle, what is that dish they serve that you love? Oh, man, you threw me a curveball. Let's just go and see. Sounds good. Nice, nice, nice. Do you like to go out sometimes in New York, Michelle, and explore new restaurants these days? Do you ever get a chance to do that? Yes, as much as I possibly can. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. not all the times, but not all the time, but I... I like, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. I was watching a documentary over the weekend about uh, like plant-based eating and I was learning mm. about 11 Madison Park. You know, that restaurant that won like mm. the, it, it was considered the best restaurant in the world, I think in oh. one, like la in the last couple of years. And then all of a sudden this chef is incredible. He decided they had won three Michelin stars. They were the best restaurant in the world. And then he said, nope, we're going plant-based now. So they remade wow. the entire menu and now they're and, and now trying to stay relevant in the plant-based world. I just thought it was a very gutsy move once yeah. you're on top to go and change the game entirely. I think there's yeah. a lot to learn from that. So I was wondering if you've ever eaten there. I've never been what's there. It, what's it called again? 11 Madison Park, I believe. 11. Okay. Ma right? I'm going to look 11. it up. I mean, yes. I would love to. Oh, yeah. it looks fancy. <laughs> it's fancy, but it sounds like it's really good. And now plant-based. Yeah. So super interesting. Anyways, we'll talk about that another day. Let's get back yes. to our role play here. <laughs> so Michelle, you said, ah, oh, I'm drawing a blank. I asked you, there's a place on third. And you said, yes, ah, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out the name and you, you figured out one part, you're the one with the blue roof. And so then you said, what's it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. So it means mm. you feel that you have it. Don't you hate yeah. that moment though, Lindsay, when you, when you feel you I have it that. and then, and then you figure out what it was or, or you had to look it up and you feel, ah, oh, I knew that. <laughs> I hate that too. And it's a little bit different, right? These expressions are slightly different. I'm drawing a blank. And it's right. like, maybe you don't have it at all. It's nowhere in your head. I'm drawing a blank versus right. it's on the tip of my tongue. It's so close. It's like you could bring that up in your mind, but you can't quite get it. Can't quite. The neurons right. aren't quite firing, right? In the way right. you need them to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> drawing a blank is slightly more diverse, I, I believe, because it's also for if you just can't think of 
an answer. It's not just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. And then, so I said, well, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. And you said, oh, I can't think of it right now. And that is the straightforward thing you could say. Right. Also, right. very, very, very much like drawing a blank. Right? Yes. Exactly. And then you asked me a more specific question about a dish that I love. And I said, oh, man, you threw me a curveball. So maybe yes. maybe I like a lot of dishes. I can't think of it right now. And I say, oh, come on. We just figured out the name of the restaurant. No more questions. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And we'll come back to that expression. We'll have to do another episode on baseball phrases, like I said before. Michelle, what's the takeaway for our listeners? These two expressions, threw me a curveball and drawing a blank, they are situationally related. Right. Yes. Yes, exactly. So if you throw someone a curveball, you might make them draw a blank. Exactly. So you can almost That's think of it as a cause and effect situation. And I think the the takeaway in terms of connection, guys, today is that this is a very human thing. Most of us in the entire world could say that we've had this experience at least once yeah. in the last month, right? It's not about yeah. intelligence. It's not about cognitive abilities. It's about being a human being and have, and especially nowadays, Michelle, we have so much going on. I mean, I, right now mm-hmm. I have four browsers open, four <laughs> windows open. Before we got on, I had 20, right? There's so much <laughs> happening <laughs> in our lives. How could we not be drawing a blank? So having right. something to say when that happens connects you to someone, right? Yeah. It does. It does. Exactly. It's a human, it's, it's a human, not emotion, but it's a human experience. It's a human experience. So the more of these that we can find and put words to these moments, the closer we're going to feel to people, which is what we all want is that human connection. So guys, if you love this show, hit follow right here. And Michelle, thanks for hanging out with me today. All right. Thanks. And thanks to our listener for that great question. Talk soon. Bye. 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 